Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you for checking it out. You know it's all about show business. Now, before we get on with the proceedings, I need for you to subscribe and I need you to like and say nice things. Leave nice comments, nothing nasty, okay? Now, today I have a person, a gentleman, who wears four hats. Producer, writer, singer, actor. His name is Andre Davis. Hey, Andre, how you doing? Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, Andre, let's just get right into it. Let's start with, let's see, the act of, the hat of a writer. Hmm. I've seen two of your plays. So let's start with how did you come up with Man of the House, right? Right. Well, I've done plays in the past that center on domestic abuse. And I had an idea to write it from the opposite side. So in my play, the man is actually the victim as opposed to being the abuser. Um, and it was honestly just me challenging myself. Uh, I thought it would be interesting to show the other side of the coin because we rarely ever hear about that. Yes. It was very funny. I mean, I, I fell out of my seat. I, I, I think I saw it two times in Lord have mercy. When he takes that gun and turns it sour, I thought I would just die. It was so funny. And the audience really enjoyed it. And I should tell you viewers that his shows are non-union, not equity, because that's another way that you can do shows. You don't mm -hmm. have to go through equity. And if you do decide to go through equity, that is very long money. You have to have a lot of backing, a lot of money. So shows are done non-equity. Okay, Andre, now, during this process of writing this show, did the, did the dialogue come to you easily, or was it over a long period of time? How did it happen? So this show, it actually came uh, very fast. I had the idea, opened up my laptop, and I would say in about four hours, I pretty much had the entire script. So it just what? flowed. Yeah, this one flowed pretty fast. They don't all flow that fast, but this one just happened to, yeah. Okay, but wait a minute. When you said four hours over a period of four hours, like, all, it's in your computer, all done, it's done? For the most part, for the most part. Now, of course, you know, as a writer, you go back, you edit, you might add on some things, but the, the premise of the show, I, the show right now, I think, has nine scenes and... I want to say eight of them were done in about four hours. Wow. So when you finished, like, writing this piece, Man mm -hmm. of the House, then what was the next thing that you did? Pay attention, writers, in case you want to write something. What was the next step? step? So, a so after it was finished, after I went through everything, I started to envision the actors and actresses that I wanted to have in it. So this was my first one that I produced. Okay. So as opposed to doing an open cast and call to fill every slot, I actually reached out to actors and actresses that I knew could actually pull these roles off, right? And so once we finished the casting process, we sat down and did the table read. Okay, so you had in mind the type of actor that you wanted to play each of these roles. Most of them. All of the leads in the show were people that I've worked with previously. Okay. And so we already had, so the guy that plays my best friend, we've done several projects where we played either close friends or best friends. Um, and he had the comedic timing that the role needed. So that was, was a no-brainer for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was wonderful. Uh, yeah, no-brainer. Uh, the girl who played the my girlfriend's best friend, again, we've done shows and she's, been hilarious in all of them um so it was a no-brainer so some of them it was just it was just that easy that i knew exactly who i was going to get for those roles and i'm just glad that they actually accepted okay so basically you didn't have an audition not for those roles so we did i did audition for the supporting cast all right yeah and what so was that, that like was... <laughs> <laughs> um the audition process is always interesting to me. 
um, because you really don't know who's coming through the door. Uh, there were some that on paper you thought was going to come in and just annihilate the audition and they were terrible. And, and do you think it was versa? because of nerves? I no, I don't think it was because of nerves. I think it was more so ego. Uh, them thinking that they were actually no, uh, yeah. uh, back up, hold it, hold it, honey. Listen, ego. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I want you all to pay attention. I want you all to pay attention because in another one of my conversations, a director talks about ego, bringing your ego to an audition. That is probably the last thing you should do. <laughs> you do not do that, Julie, because number one. A director, a casting director, they can pick up on it. You think they're yeah. not picking up on it? They can yeah. pick up on it. Okay, Absolutely. go ahead. That, wow, that's, that was, that's amazing. Go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, you know, a lot of people, they come in with the air that they are better than what they really are. Um, and like you just said, it, it does show. It shows, and when you don't actually deliver. So my thing is, if you're going to come in with that, then deliver. But don't come in with this air that you're great and then you're reading the lines with no emotion or you can't really read. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was uh, things like that. I was... went to the store to get a loaf of bread. <laughs> 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 so wait a minute. Stop there. Stop there. Stop there. All right. I have said this several times before and I'm going to continue to say it, that it is one thing for you to covet what someone else is doing and be jealous because they're doing something and, and you're not instead of working on your craft. So mm -hmm. having said that, are you ready when the time comes? When that door opens, you get that job. Are you ready to deliver? Mm -hmm. So Andre just says, just said, you come through the door with an air probably arrogant to the point of death, thinking you all that in some chocolate cake. Now, get, uh, work with me here. Work with me here. You all that, you think you all that in some chocolate cake, baby, with some ice cream. So we got to throw some ice cream in there. And then you don't deliver. What yeah. does that say about you? Yeah. Number yeah. one, you don't go to an audition with an attitude. Being arrogant. Don't, please, don't ever do that. Yeah. And always be on top of your game because you're setting foot into an audition. And don't forget, they may not use you for th this particular project because maybe you're not the type. They might use you for something else. That's right. So always be prepared and always come correct. Okay, baby, continue on. They come in with this attitude. and mm. So did you hire anybody like this who came in like this? No. See, Not there one. you go. Not one. Okay, because, baby, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the thing about it for me is that the work environment. You want it to be something where everybody doesn't have to be best friends where I work. But they got to get along. It, exactly, exactly. And that's what it was. And I knew all. So I'll leave it there. Okay. All right. So you have your cast. And would you say, for the most part, they got along, was a good group of people? Yeah. They yeah, got along. Absolutely. Because what I mm -hmm. saw, the performances were really fabulous. Really, Thank really you. fabulous. All right. Was there at any given time that any one of the performers gave you a problem? Yes. <laughs> yes. You want to speak so, on that? You don't have to call <laughs> no names. No names. No, absolutely. So I think the the gift and the curse of hiring people that you know yep. um is that if you don't set the ground rules from the very beginning of your expectations for them um it can go left fast yes. and that's what happened there were a couple of times and you know i'm going to say it uh i guess you can edit this out if you don't want the people to know but you are my mentor and so oh, i can oh lord have <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh thank you sweetheart go ahead <laughs> no you you are and thank so you. i can remember coming to you with an issue um with one of the cast members one time and i told you you know i told the entire cast of what my expectations were 
And you actually gave me this hint that I've kept with till this day. When you're working with friends, it's very important that you have that one-on-one conversation outside right. mm-hmm. of what you do with the entire cast because a lot of times they will think this doesn't apply to me mm-hmm. because they're your friend. But when you have that one-on-one conversation, then it's understood and there's no room for uh, confusion. Mm-hmm. And so that was a very, very good hint. But that so absolutely- wait a minute. Let me let me make sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying that before you actually took them them on, uh, as far as your project was concerned, you you had a conversation with them that you understand that I am your boss. I am. You, did you have that conversation with them? So initially, no. Until I uh, had okay. Un- until I had that issue. And okay. again, I remember calling you and, and talking to you about it. And I handled the issue. I handled it. Um, but you said in the future. In the beginning. Mm-hmm. This is what you do. And since then, I've mounted a couple of uh, two or three other plays. And I've always done that with anybody that I've worked with. I've sat them down one on one prior to. Yes. And it eliminates a lot of yes. confusion. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's funny uh, because... That has also happened to me where I wanted to take this person on and this, there was a lot of money involved. And, and I said to this person, I said, you know, um, I th- will become your boss. And you have to understand if you do not follow the rules of what this platform is, I will fire you. I mm. said, do you think that our relationship, our friendship, and we had been friends for a long time, but I just wasn't hired. See, I don't hire anybody because they're my friend. Mm-hmm. They can be my friend, but they have to they have to have what I need them for. They have to be right, cool absolutely. at what absolutely. I need them for. I'm just not gonna hire you because you my friend. And I and I had this conversation and unfortunately at some point I did have to fire this person and he mm. did not speak to me for three years. Did he come correct after you had the conversation with him or with the person? So uh initially yes. And then Ooh, initially. it was still, Ooh. yeah, initially, yes. And then <laughs> uh, something happened again. And then that's when they were replaced. Good and for I'd you. Let them go. But let yeah. me ask you this. Is the friendship still there? It, it wasn't as strong. Mm-hmm. It was on not your part or, or, or on the other person's? There's. Yeah, they're mad. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, they couldn't it, take it, it. They feel yeah. that you're. I'm your friend and you basically should put up with me under any circumstances and doesn't right. work that way. Not when money it is does not. Just Absolutely. not work that way. Okay. All right. So the show was well received. Yes. It was well received. Yeah. Okay. Your process. Let's go to the director hat. Okay. Okay. You put on a director hat and now you're directing them. Were they ready or did they have the capabilities of changing on a dime? Meaning, for those of you who don't know what I mean, means in theater, a director could give you this direction, one moment, and then maybe mm, he doesn't quite like it like that. I want to see you do it this way. That means you change on a dime. They don't have all day for you to process. You have to change on a dime. So how was it working with these actors and singers too, uh, under your direction? So uh, to answer that question, most of them, especially the lead, absolutely. Uh, They literally, uh, anything I threw at them, they were able to spit it back, uh, which was great. Some of the supporting cast, they were newer actors. Mm -hmm. And to your point, uh, I remember one particularly, He would always have to go home and and come back. Right. And so I told him the exact same thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. When you say go home, what do you mean go home? So we would go through the notes, right? I would give the direction. He would try. And I'm like, you have to work on that. He will go home, come back, and then he's oh, able to spit it out. He had to do his home. Um, yeah. Right, right. So, you know, and I told him the same thing, you know, you got to get a little faster with that because not everyone is going to have that type of patience. Now, for me, because it was a supporting role, um, it was okay. I had a little more time, but if he was a lead, I would have recast him. 
Yeah, because you really do, you have to be able to change on a, on a dime. Uh, let me ask you this, Mr. Director. Um, <laughs> when you're working with seasoned actors, mm -hmm. is there collaboration between you and them? Say, for instance, if they come up to you and they say, okay, um, I like what you've done here. I like the direction that you've given me, but can I show you something? I want to try mm -hmm. it another way. Uh, can, I, can I show you, see if you like it? Are you open mm -hmm. to that? Absolutely. Uh, right, one good. thing about me is that you have to trust the people that you hire. Yes. And when those people are good at what they do or, and great at what they do, uh, a lot of times they will go home and they're processing just like you're processing. And they may see something. So you have to be, for me, I'm open to it. Now, with that being said, if I don't like it or the answer is no, then it's no and we move on. But I'm always open to hearing it and seeing it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times they bring something that I didn't see. And There's nothing wrong with going to a director saying, I had a thought about something because if you don't bring it up, he's not going to know or she's not going to know. That's right. So, and I did that even before I, I, I had a bit of success. So um, I was always like that. If I thought of something, I would just say, watch me do this and see if you like it or something like that. So you have to speak up, but here again... I keep going back to this. When you bring up that suggestion, that should better all be all that and some chocolate cake. Because <laughs> you bringing up the suggestion. Now you want him to watch something right. that you want to do that you're hoping that he will pick over his choice. So just be on top of your game when you do that. And all I'll right. give you a perfect example of that sure. too. Uh, in the play, the one of the, the points or, or the parts I should say that you like the most, we stumbled in that in rehearsal. Oh. So we were playing with the gun and then the guy who plays my best friend took the gun and he, and he, and that's how we stumbled across it. So <laughs> that, that's exactly how it happened. That was not written. Man, when I saw that, I thought, just deliver me. It was just, <laughs> it was the best. All right. So do you enjoy directing? Love it. Love it. I like it only to a point. I took on a couple projects. It was fine. But for me, I would rather um, function as someone who comes to me and, or even of a director. And that's happened before. Vivian, would you coach these singers, give them a direction uh, and how you think it should be sung? I think I get more joy, joy out of that because directing by the way any of you listening who, who might be interested in this in directing it is no joke hmm. there's research there's yes. it depends on the project the, the 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 project that you're doing and it depends on the script because if it's a period piece that's research to the point of death in fact all pieces are you have to do your research so that it is as authentic as it can possibly be. Do you have to? Do you have anything to say to someone who might be interested in directing, Andre? Yeah, no, I mean you're spot on with that. I think one of the reasons why I love to direct so much is because I normally do my own pieces. So okay. being being that I wrote it, I know the intent mm -hmm. behind it, and so to bring that to life, I you know what I honestly don't know if I would write a piece and give it away to someone else to direct. I was just about to ask you that. I was just <laughs> about to ask you that. Okay, I'm going to give you a, a what if. Um, okay, big time director with a huge name and, you've had, and you have this piece that you can't get off. I mean, you just don't have the money. You just cannot get it off the ground. Here comes this big powerful director with a big name and he says, look, Give the piece to me. Let me direct it. Let me help you with this. Would you do it? So Ooh, you're taking a lot of time. The short answer would be <laughs> yes, but I would uh, negotiate where we uh, actually co-direct it, as opposed to just giving the piece away. I would okay. try to negotiate negotiate that before I. Yeah, but wait a minute, away. baby. You're not giving the piece away. You're just letting him direct. Right. Many Which writers me, have, have, have hired um, directors to oh, direct their pieces. You're not giving him your piece. 
You still have those rights. You're just hiring him to direct your piece. You're not very it. true. No, very true. But to that point, when I say give it away, I mean my vision. So if that director gets it, you could, two people can read a script and come up with two completely that is very different. True. You know what I mean? And so for me, that would be like giving away my project. Okay, but what if he sat down with you and, sa and said, um, what's your vision for this? Because directors have done that. They do that. Right. They sit down. What is your vision for this? How do you see this? So I would, I would be open to it. Um, but one thing that I, I do know is that once, so we can sit down and we can say, this is what I want it to be. Mm -hmm. But many times, once you give it over to the director, you have to be open to their interpretation of it. Yes. Um. So I would hope that they will stay true to what it is that I want. Um. But you have to be open that some things may change when you give that piece away. So my, I mean, my advice, uh, because I did not go to school, like I had no formal training. All of my training was really from being on the job. And while I was on the job as an actor, I was not one of those actors that sat in the dressing room until it was my time. And then I came on, did my job and I went home. I like to sit in the wings. I like to watch. I like to observe uh, as a director. I like to see what the audience actually responded to. Uh, for me, I do a lot of drama comedy. So when I wrote Man of the House, there were just certain things that I knew would hit with the type of audience that I was mm -hmm. going for. So mm -hmm. as a director, I would just say uh, for me, uh, being that I did it very unconventional like, <laughs> uh, is to learn the craft and, and study and, and be open to, to watch and listen and observe. And you can never learn too much. Never. I'm trying to get comfortable in this seat, honey. It's a nice leather chair now. Let's be I real see. here. But well, I'm, like, sl I'm slouching down. See, I'm getting too comfortable. I got I to gotta sit up, you know, and, and listen to you. <laughs> Okay, um, did you hear what he said? When you only, for instance, singers, when you, and we're going to get to that in a minute, or actors, when you only, or dancers, when you only think about the thing that you do that is your forte and you don't think about anything else, you're not going to be as great on a stage as you would be if you knew about sound, if you knew about lights, if you knew about all of these things that contribute to making you great. And I'm particularly talking to singers because singers can go off and do cabaret shows and so can dancers and so can actors. So I, maybe I'm talking to all three. But you want to know about the things that contribute, contribute to your possible greatness. Ask questions. You don't know until you ask questions. And most people are very happy to give you information on what their expertise is. So mm -hmm. just like you said, Andre, um, you studied, you looked, you watched. I think you have a, a gift for that. Yeah. And, you know, just one thing that I did not say that it's very important. Uh, as an actor, when I worked under a director mm -hmm. that I thought was a great director, I would go to them and say, what's your process? What do you do? How do you come up with this? So I did a piece called Camp Logan. It was a period piece. The director, uh, he was just, he was amazing. He was just amazing. And he gave me such a great tip, and I still use it to this day. I asked, you know, how do you come up with this stuff? Because it seemed like he was coming up with it out of thin air. When you say come up with the stuff, what do you mean stuff? What are you talking about? So some of the choices that he had the choices. to make. Yeah. Um, and I asked him, you know, how do you come up with this? And what he said to me is, you know, as a director, I take the piece home, I study it, mm -hmm. but then I watch you guys. And a lot of times you mm -hmm. guys are leading me to a place or you're right at the brink of something. You see? And it's my job as a director to bring that out. So again, it's that collaboration. Yes. Um, but for anyone who is trying to do this, if you come up under a director who you feel is really good or, or great at what they do, don't be afraid to ask questions yes. um, because it's those little tidbits that go a long way in the end. And, and also, too, you will have directors, some directors True. who are not good, giving you very, very bad directions. What do you do in a case like that? Probably have a, a talk with them and, and I kind of put it back on them. 
Okay, you've given me direction. You want to tell me why you're giving me direction, why you feel that works for this particular character? And I put it on them to explain. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they will say, well, what do you feel? <laughs> they, they put it back on me because they don't have an answer. Because right. it has gone so against what this character would do. Like, I'm going to give you an example. I was playing, if you laugh, I will jump through this camera. And you know <laughs> I, I am. Jump through. <laughs> I was playing a princess. Okay, no laughter. This is, oh, you're holding it. Y'all have slapped you since this. <laughs> anyway, and very docile kind of character. And all of a sudden, he gave me something that was so raunchy and so not this character. And I said, I'm not calling his name. I said, um, and why would she do that? <laughs> and he looked at me. He said, okay, Vivian, um, maybe not a good idea. I said, mm, I don't think so. It's not a good idea. <laughs> and the only time I would do that, and I'm always respectful, the only time I would do something like that is if it was like so left till it just mm -hmm. did not make sense. Because that yeah. also affects you as an actor. How are you going to put this across if you're so into this character and they're asking you to do something that in your heart you know this character would never do? It's just yeah. so left field. Okay, good advice, baby. Now let's move on to producing. <laughs> so that's the money part and putting all the pieces together. With your man of the house, how'd you do it? What'd you, what was your first thing? So I'm going to be extremely transparent and say, the first thing I did was pray about it because Lord I did mercy. not. Thank you, Jesus, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have nearly the amount of money that I needed to knock that play. I didn't. And so what I did was I prayed for a sign, right? And I was specific. Mm -hmm. And I said that if this is meant to be, mm -hmm. that my dad would actually give me part of the seed money to get started. Now, he wasn't going to give me everything. But just part of it. Now, my dad is very tight with money. He does, not, he does not give it freely. So I said, if this is a go, if this is meant, he's going to give me seed money. Mm -hmm. And he did. And that's how I knew that this was meant to be. But with the production part, that is by far the most challenging piece. It is. To, it is. that the, the moving piece is, the amount of money that you need that most of us starting out do not have, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to be resourceful. You have to be resourceful. Uh, you know, for me, we started out in a black box. Yes. And instead of spending $5,000 on this elaborate set, I decided to keep it very simple. It's very simple, but it worked. Exactly. And that's the beauty of theater. I think a lot of times we get lost, especially so... For me, I do what a lot of people refer to as black theater or some people chitlin circuit theater. Um, the chitlin circuit? <laughs> right. You, you hear that <laughs> a lot. Um, and I think sometimes you get so caught up in trying to uh, have this elaborate production and the set and the spinning stages that you're spending money that you do not have that could be better spent marketing the production. Because it makes no sense to spend $5,000 on a set and then you have $0 to market the piece to get people to actually come in and see it and put money in not only in your pocket, but to be able to pay your actors and everyone else as well. You know, and also, too, I think sometimes because I've seen things uh, under equity, under the union, start off a bit raw mm. in a small theater that was absolutely great they brought it to broadway got all slick and it lost something there have been many shows to go that route non-union that have made a lot of money 
So like it's tower. not to say that you have to go the union way. Right. You don't. There are, there are other avenues. If, if that's right. what you think, like the avenue you took, which is costing you a lot, your money your, that you spent, was it your money or did you have investors? How did you do it? Most of it was my money. Uh, and, your, but, and some of your dad's. Right. And some of my dad's. Yeah, you got your... Did. Now, are you and your dad close? <laughs> Very, we're close, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. But he's tight, huh? Tight with Very that tight. money. Very tight. Maybe he holding on kids. to that dollar. What? You want a dollar from me? I ain't giving you no dollar. <laughs> especially with his kid. Especially because, you know, he's always instilled to work for what you want. So... It's not easy at all to get a dollar out of that man, but he did. Um, but and, yeah, so and most also of it was to mine. theater or anything in show business is an investment that you might not Absolutely. have returns on. <laughs> Absolutely, that is uh, what it is. I've learned that lesson. <laughs> yeah, uh, most of it was mine. Uh, uh, Darren Dowdy, Razorback Products. He was a sponsor uh, in the beginning. Um, for uh, about the first year he did. Uh, yeah, he, he was well, good in the beginning, huh? Very. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Okay. Now, <laughs> let's get to, we've covered what? The producer hat, the writer hat. Uh, oh. Now let's get to the actor hat. Okay. Because you also acted in the pieces that you've written. Right. Would you venture to say that you wrote them for you to star in? So, funny enough, Man of the House, when I wrote the play initially, I was going to play the funny guy, sidekick, right? Because really? it would have, yes, it would have challenged me. But okay. see, it's something Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what do you mean it would have challenged you? What do you mean by that? It would have, because I've never played a comedic lead. I'm always pretty much the drama lead okay. in any piece that I've done. So this well, you got that leading to... man thing going, honey. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. But... <laughs> <laughs> but you know what god told me don't do it <laughs> he said do what you know this is your first time out and that's what i did and it worked out great so yes i did not i did not write that character for me but i did wind up playing it and, and funny enough i wrote it but i did not connect with the character initially like i had to do a lot of work myself and I, I thought it was going to be a lot easier because again i wrote it i know the intention but Wait it did not click <clears throat> to me initially excuse me for a minute <clears throat> let me get this straight <laughs> you wrote this piece so you're going to assume this character you're going to do this character you wrote this piece now but you couldn't identify with it uh it did not click initially when i did my work at home it wow. was not clicking and i had and you know what it took me working on my own <laughs> script, but I had to do the same work that I would do if I picked up someone else's script. Working on you the know, script as an actor, you mean? Right, as an actor, right. So I recorded myself, so I wanted to hear what I sounded like. I got in the mirror and looked at some of the facial expressions to kind of merge this character together because it did not click initially for me. Okay, but wait a minute. Why didn't it click? Because you're not used to having a woman do that to you? Hello. Well, that. <laughs> so, okay, so here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. You did not leave Andre at home. Absolutely. You did not leave Andre in the kitchen two miles away. You brought him to the set. Do you Absolutely. hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Let me expound on this a bit. Yep. When you are playing a character, who you are in life, Baby, he don't exist. She don't exist. That's you right. leave that person at home. I played a bag woman now. You see me playing a bag woman? Be nice. <laughs> don't leave me no nasty comments. But I became a bag lady, a homeless person. You should see how they had me. Everything about me was homeless. It was nothing Vivian Reed anywhere. I have played two um, voodoo queens. I've played two maids. You leave that person at home. So, Andre, you didn't leave Andre at home? So, the good thing is <laughs> that I caught that before I got to set. Thank you, I'm, Jesus. Yeah, when I was doing my work at home, though, you know, you go over your lines as an actor. It just, it did not click initially. And I had to really, 
exactly what you what you said was just let all of me go mm-hmm. and morph into who yes. James is. That's my character's name. Yep. Yeah. And what was your biggest challenge um, besides that um, in the show? Because you're wearing two hats here. You're right. actually three, but the producer hat has now kind of been put aside somewhere. So you're the director and you're one of the lead actors. So mm-hmm. would you stop if you saw a, a, an actor doing something that you wanted to see differently? You just went back and forth? So those are notes that I would give after the show. After uh, the show. W- once the show starts, you have to, it, it's showtime now. The work yes. that you did in preparation for the show, you have to let it play out. Yes. Um, otherwise, I would have literally the entire play been critiquing other actors on stage. And you can't do that. At that point, I'm no longer the director. I'm James. Even I'm for rehearsals. Guy. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, and, But Absolutely. you did have a stage manager, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're an assistant of stage. Did, did they function as your assistant assistant or did they function as a stage manager? So more so an assistant. OK. More so an assistant. But you had yeah. that person take notes. Absolutely. Absolutely. OK. So. And then in help? rehearsal and then in rehearsal, a lot of times I had a stand in as well. So. Oh, that's good. I could actually, that's yeah, smart. I could actually sit out and watch what was yes. going on. Mm hmm. Excellent. And that way I can develop my own notes. Okay, so actually you've given a lot of good advice in case there are writers out there who are writing projects for themselves. What would they do in a case like this? So actually what you said is great. Um, You have to kind of put that aside and, you know, depend on your assistant to take good notes. Um, And then if you saw something happening during the piece that you're in, you got to not even deal with that until afterwards. And then right. you give them the notes. So great advice. Anything else you want to say for the actor hat? Wearing the <laughs> actor hat? The, the acting, I love to act. So that was fun. Uh, that was one of the moments where I was able to let everything else go and not have to worry about anything else in the show and just be James. So that it's fun. And, and if you're, you're a wonderful to... actor too. I mean, I've seen you Thank do you. two or three uh, things. And, and I mean, you're wonderful. Um, actor, I'm, you really I, are. I had a really great teacher. <laughs> Who was that? Uh, you might know her. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I didn't bring you on for that. I brought you on because you are wonderful at what you do. Because you. if you weren't, you would not be doing this. <clears throat> you would not be having this conversation with me. <laughs> so we're gonna go back. Okay. Uh, I want you to enlighten this audience. You told me this later that you said to this friend of yours who was looking to study and wanted to study with me. And you told him, you don't tell me this, of course, until way late, later, months later, that you got to be ready for Vivian because Vivian, I'm, of course, I'm paraphrasing. Vivian is no joke. And then you told, like, for instance, me, he, you said something like, I went in thinking I was all that. Remember? <laughs> thinking, do you remember what you said? Because I, I want you to continue. No, at this point. I remember. Okay, go so, ahead. <laughs> and talk about the two producers that brought you there. Talk about what they were looking to do with you, the recording. Right. So <laughs> the way that I, I met uh, Ms. Vivian Reed, uh, so I was recording, I, I was signed to an independent uh, label. And it was a little backwards because we recorded the entire album. And then they wanted to find me a vocal coach where it probably should have happened prior to me going in to record. But anyway. Uh, but the songs one, came out great. They came out great. They did. Uh, they did. So the <laughs> one of the producers actually <laughs> was a former student of yours. And they knew you were in the city, so they came to introduce us. So I can remember coming for the first consultation where you just asked me to sing and I sang and you said, okay, that was good. We did some breathing exercises and you said, oh, your breath is good too. Okay, I can take them on as a client. So when I left there the first time, I thought, oh, this is going to be easy, right? Because <laughs> 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 I'm see, I'm here 
learned some new stuff now. Okay, go ahead. No, go I ahead. Said, I thought it was going to be easy. And then I came for my first lesson. Strike number one was I was late to the lesson, right? I don't know if you remember this, but I, I was do. late. But go ahead. And so you didn't say anything initially. I came in, we started the lesson. And I can just remember by the end of the lesson, uh, walking out of the apartment and asking myself, can I really sing? Because I don't know what the hell just happened. But you, according to what you said, you said, I thought I was all this and all that. And she took some imaginary scissors and went cluck, 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 cluck. And then I said, then I, you said, I said, now we can start. Now we can start. Snip, snip, <laughs> snip, snip, snip. snip. <laughs> but you know what? And let me tell you all. When I when I, when I tell you that everybody has some kind of quirky thing that they do, whether like me, I used to sing into the wings, and it was like the audience out there just didn't exist. I would sing into the wings. I would do this with my mouth when I was doing pirouettes. Andre had a thing with his thumb inside his hand, tuck 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 like this. And it took him a while to break it. And I said, you know, your thumb is inside of your hand. And I said, you know, you can't sing like that on the stage. You can't. So we remember we had to work on that. Yeah. And But you know what? Bottom line is you got very serious. We worked on your falsetto, which is wonderful now. I mean, the last time I heard it. And your voice, number one, you always could sing. That That's the thing. You could sing. I knew you could sing. We just had to refine it yeah, and bring out things that you weren't doing. And my whole thing is not only working on the voice, but to work on the delivery, yeah, the performance skills. And when I came to see, I ain't calling no names now. I ain't calling names. But when you opened up for this big star, <laughs> I much enjoyed you more than the star because the star was just over riffing. And it, I think it kind of drove the audience. It, it kind of drove us crazy. We were mm -hmm. tired. He had fatigued us. I mean, it's like, yeah. wow, can who can do that much riffing? And he would kill his songs. He killed every one of his songs. I don't know if you remember that, but I you remember opened exactly. that show. And mm -hmm. to me, that was it. That was it because I enjoyed what you did. You were on your game. Um, okay. So in your show, of course, there are singing, acting and singing. Mm -hmm. And so what is the next step? Where are you in the process? I know you've gone on to writing other things, but of course you're not through with Man of the House, are you? No. So I my goal is to actually run Man of the House in New York City for the month of October, which is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Okay. So I initially took it off the table for 2021 because of COVID and everything that was happening. But now that Everything's starting to come around. Things are starting to open up. I'm putting that back on the table now. So what I'm looking to do, and I actually spoke with the theater today, uh, to find a theater that can are house Are you looking for a black box month. again? Or? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, a black box. Because mm -hmm. in addition to that, we've also used Man of the House for uh, domestic violence educational programming with yes. colleges and universities. So I want to combine the two. Um, mm -hmm. this year. So that's my next plan for Man of the House. That's what I'm working on right now. Okay. And then in addition to that, I've started writing film. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, good. Yeah. So I have a short film that'll be coming out the weekend of Juneteenth. Okay. Um, and it's Great. called a, yeah, Attack from All Angles. And I have another. So it's befitting Juneteenth. In the bucket. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have another one or two plays that I, I, I want to put up if I can get the right people in it. Right. Okay, you know what? This has been some great information. Do you have any funny stories that have happened that you care to share? <laughs> Something that happened to you, perhaps, on the stage. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lord, so I know <laughs> crap has happened, happened to me, Lord. Oh, God. But on the Broadway stage, shall we talk? Okay, tell me something. Tell me a couple of them. So I'll tell you the funniest thing that happened to me as a singer. Uh, okay. This was, now, I, I sing r and I'm an R&B singer. Yes, and, and you do it well. Thank you. Uh, so there was a show. Uh, it was a Wendy Williams comedy show. And this was a show. It was lined up with comedians from top 
to bottom. It was only me and another singer who happened to be Life Jennings. Uh, at the time, we were new. Again, it was a new label. The The CEO was new to this. The producers were new. I was new. We and wait a minute. And you're saying that everybody else, they were comedians. Right. Everyone okay. else was comedian. And we came up with this show. It was a 20-minute set. And it was pretty much all original material. Oh. This. Oh. I've never in my life felt like I was about to get booed the way that I felt I was going to get booed at this show. By the last song, in my mind, I'm just like, just commit, keep going. And it's keep almost going. over. And once that last note was hit, it was, thank you. Good night, everybody. Thanks so much. And I, <laughs> I got off. Okay, lesson practice. learned. What did you learn? So when you are a new artist, right? Mm -hmm. And especially when you're doing something like a comedy show where people are not really coming to hear singing, yep. they want to laugh. The best thing you can do is do something at least that they are familiar, familiar with. Familiar, baby. Familiar yes. with. You have to put your oh own my God. spin on it to make it yours. So you still put your own spin on it. You put but, your spin on it. Right. But... It, it it takes you a much longer way than trying to force feed your original material on an yes. audience who did not come to hear singing. I mean, when you said original material, I knew what the, what the end of the story was going to be. Because <laughs> you are so right. You cannot do that, especially if you are a new artist and you're on a show that has nothing to do with singing. It's all comedians or all somebody else other than singers. You definitely cannot do that. Of course, you put your spin on it. But the thing I think that you, uh, how you handled it is great because you can't, number one, ever let it show That's right. that you're uncomfortable, that you're bothered because they're not really paying attention to you and they may be on the brink of booing you. You can't ever let that show, mm -hmm. ever. So that was mm -hmm. good that you handled it that way. And you know what? You learned a valuable lesson. Absolutely. And oh what made God. you think that they were about, what made you feel that they were about to boo you? I mean, were they making, uh, 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 were they whistling? What were they doing? So it was the body language. Uh, Ooh, so shut I up. Actually, like, show me, show me. What kind of body language? So, you know, initially I come up with the first song and they're like, oh, okay, great. Right. So they're clapping. Second song, back a little bit more, clapping. Third <laughs> song. By the fourth song, they were. Oh no, they were down in the seat. <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they were about to be, honey. I was oh yeah, because <laughs> I mean they they set went from sitting up straight to down some more to down some more. Right? And they, oh my god! Yeah, and before they fell on the floor and slipped out of that chair, they gonna boo your ass. That's what That's they were gonna right. do. That's right. That's what they were going to do. But you know what, sweetheart? We all, I think we have to make mistakes in order to benefit from them. Absolutely. Um, would you say that you have a passion for this business? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, if I did not, I would not still be doing it. You know, a lot of people in my position probably would have stopped a long time ago. Uh, without a doubt, I know that this is what I was put on this earth to do. Mm -hmm. Now, how far I go, I leave that up to the creator, but mm -hmm. I know that I'm living in my purpose and yes. there's just, there's nothing greater than that. There's no greater feeling than that. And I, I can wake up happy every day doing yes. what I know I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's, it's, it's horrible to be doing something and you don't love it. As so many people are stuck in their jobs, regular jobs, like your nine to five jobs or whatever their hours are, and they're not happy. And it's, it's the worst feeling in the world. Well, the same thing can apply to uh, show business. Because mm -hmm. show business, I call it a slow suicide. <laughs> mm. I, that's what I call it, you know, because there are more disappointments and you have to be ready for that. Yeah. You have to understand what this is. Every audition you go into, you're not going to get. Right. Everything depends on type. Type, type, type. T-Y-P-E. Or if you got an attitude. See, that's going to get you thrown out right there. That <laughs> attitude that you heard Andre talk about, that's going to get your ass out the door. So you got to remember that when you come in, 
you're looked at from the moment your audition starts from the moment you come in the door, from the moment you walk in, how you walk in. It starts there. This industry is not for the weak. It's not. And if you're not going to put the amount of work in that you need in order to succeed, you might as well find something else to do now. No, you have to find time. something else to do because, number one, let's just be just in your face because that's what these conversations are. You do that enough time, don't do your homework, come in the next day not prepared, do that a lot of times, and your ass is going to be fired. I keep saying this over and over and over again. Time is money. They expect you to go home after a rehearsal, yes, have your dinner, chill out, and then pick up that script and get to work. That's what you have Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... Andre, thank you, baby. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yep. A Diamond ENT, that's me all Oh, over. yes. D tell A them. A Diamond ENT. A Diamond so, ENT. Right, that's my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my website. All and you have a, a website. Diamond it's all the same name. Yep. A Diamond I, I ENT. I wasn't that smart. I didn't do that. I should have been that smart. <laughs> I have the same name. I got V Reed Music over here and then VivianReed.com over here and something else over here. Very, very smart. Great. Check out. Check him out on all the social media platforms and also check out his website. Music is on the website. It's on the website. They can purchase yep. it on the website, at the website. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Terrific. Thank you again, and I'll see you Thank the next you. time. Bye. All right.